Flowey is Not a Good Life Coach by Unrested Jade Chapter 6, A Palate Cleanser Papyrus enjoyed folding laundry. It was his second favorite chore. Something about starting with a basket of chaos and ending up with neat stacks of sorted clothing was satisfying on a fundamental level. He'd been catching up on the laundry since he'd gotten up. He hadn't slept much, but that was just as well considering how much there was to do. Nice, mindless chores. When the silence got to him, he turned on the TV for some background noise, keeping the volume low enough to not wake his brother. Metaton's morning show was on. The boxy robot was chatting amiably with one of his guests over coffee that Metaton, lacking a mouth, couldn't drink. Papyrus wasn't paying attention to their conversation. He just let the soft chatter wash over him, and he kept folding, trying not to think. He winced when he made a careless reach for an unpaired sock. Flowey had healed him before letting go last night, but his arm was still tender and would be for days. He took a couple of minutes to remind himself that he was safe in his home, to convince himself that he was okay now. Movement upstairs caught his attention, and he looked up to find his brother leaning against the railing, watching him. That was two days in a row he was up early. Was I too loud? Papyrus said, reaching for the remote to dial down the volume on the TV farther. Nah, Sans said. I woke up and could see my floor. Thought we got robbed. <laughs> Laundry bandits? Papyrus said. Not on my watch. You left your door unlocked, so... You know, you don't have to do that, bro, he said, nodding at the basket. Papyrus shrugged. I don't mind. He turned his attention back to his folding. There's coffee on the counter. You'll have to warm it up. He felt Sans sit at the other end of the couch. Papyrus was aware his brother was staring at him, but he wasn't going to say anything. Not after yesterday. He didn't want to know what other vulnerabilities he'd shred if he snapped again. So, Sans said, after a long, awkward silence. And that was all it took. One second Papyrus was fine, and the next he quietly sort of caved in on himself. Oh shit! Sans hurriedly scooted closer, putting a tentative arm around Papyrus's shoulders. Um... I'm, I'm sorry, Papyrus said between sobs. I shouldn't have said anything I said. I'm sorry. He hated crying. It was embarrassing and unbecoming, and the action itself was bringing up fresh trauma he was still in the middle of pushing down and burying. Ugh, and he had the hiccups again. And then Sans had to go and make it worse by not even teasing him about it. Bro, it's okay, Sans said, sounding close to tears himself. It's okay, deep breaths. He gestured to the undershirt Papyrus had been folding that he was now using to dab at his eye sockets. You want me to get you some tissues, or, or not? He said. I mean, it's still cleaner than it started out, right? It's a net gain. It took what felt like hours for Papyrus to pull himself together. Sans sat with him the entire time, not saying anything, rubbing circles into Papyrus's back. Eventually, and by degrees, he was able to calm down, taking deep, shuddering breaths that served no practical purpose beyond pushing the tightness out of his chest. Feel better? Sans tried for what Papyrus assumed was a goofy smile, and ended up somewhere in the middle of Grimace territory. He nodded. He didn't trust himself to talk quite yet in case he set himself off again. Sans got up to get that cup of coffee, and Papyrus picked up where he'd left off on the laundry. He set Sans's undershirt aside. He'd have to rewash it. Sans set his mug on the end table and settled cross-legged on the floor. He matched socks for a few minutes in silence. You know I'm always here, right? He said, finally. But if you need me to back off, I can give you some space for a while. That's fine, too. Papyrus sighed. He wanted nothing more than to tell his brother everything, even though there was nothing Sans could do about any of it. It would be easier to bear, he thought, if only someone else knew what was happening to him. Flowey's threat from the first night was always at the back of his mind, however. He couldn't slip up. He had to be strong on his own, for his brother's sake, and Undine's, and everyone's. Sands kept talking, filling the silence. Someone I talk to every now and then says that, uh, people can get depressed after something really good happens to them, he said. Like, sudden success can make them feel kind of lost, like they don't know what happens next. He shrugged. I don't know if she's right or not. Sounds kind of backward. That must be it, Papyrus said. It sounded backward to him, too, but any ready explanation would do if it meant Sans would let the matter drop. Sans hummed thoughtfully. They sat for a few minutes more until he coughed lightly. 
So, uh, he said, not trying to freak you out, so don't cart me off to the doctor or anything, but have you ever just... He gestured, trying to frisk the right word out of the air. Lost a few seconds, like the world just skips like a scratch CD. Papyrus looked at him. Last night, when Flowey had just barely missed him with that attack, for a split second before he pushed himself up, it felt like... He chalked it up to standing up too fast. But it wasn't dizziness, was it? What was it then? Sands shrugged. It happens to me sometimes. Last night, in fact. At, I don't know, around eleven? He gave Papyrus a searching look. Maybe you stood up too fast. Papyrus didn't know what Sands was on about, or what that stuttering feeling had been, or why they'd both felt it, but he knew no good would come of admitting to his brother that he'd noticed it too. Sands stared at him for a moment longer, frowning, and then he dropped his gaze to the socks in his lap. Yeah, that must be it. He picked up a single yellow sock. Man, how come there's always one with no mate? Tension left Papyrus's body that he hadn't even realized was there. Sands stood up, giving up on finding matches for the last few socks, and walked over to take a swig from his mug. He pulled a face. Ah, he said. How many times can you microwave coffee before it gets too gross to drink? Papyrus shrugged. They both jumped at the sudden knock at the door. Two snowdrakes in an ice cap, some of the teenagers that liked to play survivalist out in the forest, were crowded together on the front step. Can we help you? Papyrus frowned. Is there some emergency? No, the older looking of the snowdrakes said, but we found something really freaky in the woods that you need to see. The bottom dropped out of Papyrus's figurative stomach. Sands joined them in the doorway, shooting them a concerned glance. Then he turned his attention to the youths outside. Ah, uh, you mean we gotta do actual work today? He whined. This seemed to soothe the teens somewhat, but it did nothing for Papyrus's nerves. He was halfway out the door before remembering that he was still in his pajamas. Ah, uh, he said, give us ten minutes. Whoa, Sands said. Papyrus worked very hard to look as though he were seeing this hilltop for the first time. Yeah, the older Snowdrake said. The woods west of town were getting a little crowded, so we came this way to look for a new hangout. She fluffed up her feathers. And we found this hill just tore the hell up. Language, Papyrus scolded, though he couldn't put much feeling behind it. So, like, the ice cap spoke up. What is it? Papyrus frowned. Hard to say, but you should definitely stay clear of this area until we find out. Tell your friends to do the same. The trio muttered their assent. A matter of days ago, they would have blown him off, but the armor conveyed authority. That actually annoyed him. He was still the same person with the same judgment. Why was he worth listening to now, just because he was lugging around a bunch of uncomfortable metal and had a different title? The teens milled around talking amongst themselves while Papyrus and Sands investigated. I'm at a loss, bro, Sands said, towing a chunk of permafrost the size of his head. It came loose and rolled away down the hill. Some kind of fight? Papyrus gritted his teeth. It's impossible to make any tracks out, if so. Partially because he'd been discreetly scuffing up any hint of his own footprints while he'd been looking around. Sands shrugged. I can't imagine any of the kids that goof off out here would be able to do this kind of damage. Unless, he said, rubbing his chin, unless they're holding some kind of club for organized fighting. A fight club, if you will. Papyrus frowned. Really? Hey! Sands shouted to the teens. You guys narking on Fight Club? There's rules against that. The trio looked at one another, then at Sands. What? Sands waved them off. Ah, never mind. He grinned up at Papyrus. Fight Club theory goes in the maybe pile, he said. As far as fake explanations went, Papyrus would prefer something more plausible. Could it have been a stalagmite, you think? He peered up at the ceiling, though it was too far away and too dark to make out. You mean a stalactite, bro? Papyrus shrugged, glancing sidelong at his brother. What difference does it make? Sands drew a cone shape in the air with his finger. I think the ones that hang down are stalactites. The ones that sit on the ground are stalagmites. Well, whatever, Papyrus snapped, relieved beyond words that they were having a normal exchange. Do you think it was one of the hangy-down ones, then? Could be, I guess, Sands said. Falling from that high up could probably make a pretty big mess of whatever it landed on. He frowned. Shouldn't there be pieces of it laying around? That was a good point. 
Papyrus had hoped Sans would be bored enough by now and just accept that explanation and leave. But he was actually taking this seriously. The one time Papyrus didn't want him to. Well, he said, at least it was better than your club for fighting idea. Which is still in the maybe pile, lest we forget, Sans said. Papyrus scoffed. Maybe your maybe pile. Sans gave the hilltop another look around. You know what we could do, he said. We could get Dogami and Dogaress out here to do some sniffing. They should be coming on duty soon, right? That's, Papyrus said, struggling to keep his voice level, a really good idea, Sans. He wanted to scream. Specifically, he wanted to scream, Sans, for the love of God, just lose interest already. We're all going to die in ways that will likely be very unpleasant, and I will spend my final moments feeling incredibly awful for letting that happen. But he couldn't do that because of the aforementioned unpleasant death issue. The absolute last people he needed here were Mr. and Mrs. Smell Everything Really Well. This must be some kind of karmic backlash for all that lying and otherwise dishonorable behavior he'd been perpetuating lately. Suddenly, his brother was a competent sentry, and it was all his fault. This was a disaster. Yeah, Sans said. If we're going all the way back to town, though, I say we break for lunch. I miss breakfast, and I'm getting a little hangry. He snapped and pointed a finger at Papyrus. That's hungry angry. That's not even a pun! It's just a stupid made-up word. I think the results speak for themselves. Papyrus brought a secret weapon when he and Sans returned to the hilltop with the dog couple in tow. He'd hoped to beat everyone else there, but the dogs moved surprisingly fast for monsters whose legs didn't lend themselves very well to bipedalism. Dogami and Dogaressa got right to work once the group crested the hill, and Papyrus's heart sank. He had never been able to figure out any kind of logic to the way the dog couple worked. He studied them now to keep himself from crying, but no new information revealed itself. They just ran around every which way, occasionally colliding into each other and generally looking like a pair of buffoons. After several minutes of this nonsense, they trotted up to Papyrus and Sands. Dogami snapped off a quick salute. We have findings to report, sir. Yes, go on, Papyrus said, with the opposite of pleasure. Dogaressa clicked her heels together. Sir! A preliminary sweep of the area put six principal scents on the scene. Firstly, she said, you. She pointed an accusing paw straight at Papyrus. Papyrus jumped. I, I, he stammered. And you, Dogaressa continued, pointing at Sands. Papyrus blinked and shut his mouth. Also, Dogami added, two snowdrakes, female, aged 15 and 17. One ice cap, male, aged 15. Also of interest, he said, leaning in. The ice cap had recently eaten a peanut butter sandwich. Dogaressa nodded solemnly. Yes, and now we both have serious peanut butter Jones. Sands chuckled. Huh, me too, actually. It is spreading, Dogaressa said. I see what you did there, Sands said, and I approve. He looked up at Papyrus. Well, this is kind of a dead end, huh? Looks that way, Papyrus said. He was going to cry at this rate. His heart couldn't take the emotional whiplash he was being put through today. That had been way too close. Dogami held up a paw for attention. Not necessarily, gentlemen, he said. As we said before, those were the results of our preliminary sweep. Yes, Dogarissa said. With more time, we can accurately assess smells days or weeks old. Well, get to it then, Sans said, while Papyrus had a minor aneurysm. Work your magic. It's not magic, Sans, Dogami said. Merely a skill honed through years of... There was a small and sharp crack of glass against the frozen ground. Two seconds later, the smell of peppermint filled the air. The dogs howled. Oh no, Papyrus said, raising a hand to his mouth. My vial of peppermint extract I keep on my person at all times for secret reasons. It must have fallen from my pocket unintentionally. Pep, Dogaressa whined. P peppermint Dogamy covered his snout, vainly trying to keep the scent out of his nose. Olfactory bulb shutting down too much minty. Sands frowned. Well, that's bad luck, he said. How long until you can smell again? It will be weeks until we are fully recovered, Dogamy said, rubbing his temples and giving Papyrus the stink eye. Sorry. Papyrus fought to keep a straight face. Disaster successfully averted. He refused to feel guilty for saving their lives, even if the pair had a nasty headache for a while. Headaches got better. 
death, not so much. Hey, Sans said, don't worry about it. Would say I treat you two to some PB Sammies for your trouble. What's the point? Dogaressa grumbled as they all started back down the hillside. It's all just going to taste like peppermint. Papyrus looked down at what was apparently his meal. Sans, when you said you were taking care of dinner, I didn't expect this. He looked across the table at his brother. I don't know why I didn't expect it, of course. Who's Sans? Just call me, Sans said with a flourish. Peanut Butter Jones. You could have just let me cook. Papyrus took a bite of his sandwich. Not even peanut butter and jelly. Just peanut butter. No plate, either. Sans shrugged, starting in on his sandwich with more enthusiasm. Nah, bro, it's my turn. I mean, he said, I think it was my turn about a hundred turns ago, but I'm lazy, so... Papyrus frowned. Sans, I... Bro, Sans said, it's fine. Just forget about it. I know I'm hard to live with. He opened and closed his mouth a couple times, looking pensive. Huh, I think I'm remembering why I don't eat this stuff more often. The problem with peanut butter for a skeleton was that it got stuck to the roof of the mouth like normal, but being without a tongue, it made it extremely difficult to dislodge. Papyrus was having the same trouble. Sans sighed. Well, that's what we get for letting me cook. Well, that be a lesson to you. Papyrus winced, hard. You okay? Yes, of course, Papyrus said, a bit too quickly. Just, this peanut butter is driving me crazy. That, at least, wasn't a lie. It was like a mouthful of glue. It wouldn't budge. Just dig it out of there with your finger, bro. That's what I'm doing. Papyrus sighed. I can see that. Not that he cared to. Disgusting. Fine. Leave it to his brother to mangle the basic tenets of dining etiquette at any and every opportunity. It was nice to get the peanut butter unstuck, though. Who have seen the dogs? Sans said around a finger. What? Papyrus took his finger out of his mouth and tried again. What? I said, you should have seen the dogs, Sans said, hopefully done digging around in his mouth for the rest of the conversation. They were licking their chops for a good thirty minutes after their sandwiches. Hilarious. They took you up on your offer? Yeah, you're lucky I smoothed things over. Sans leaned back in his chair, lacing his fingers behind his head. They were pretty peeved at you. Their eyesight isn't very good. You really did a number on them, knocking out their smellers like that. Papyrus did his best to look remorseful. That is unfortunate. I'll have to find some way to make amends for my clumsiness. Sans' grin slipped. Why'd you do it? I just told you, Papyrus said, avoiding Sans' eyes. He never noticed before now, but Sans was incredibly good at staring. It fell out of my pocket in a moment of clumsiness. Tch, Sans said, packing an essay of information into one syllable. And since when do you carry peppermint oil around with you anyway? Peppermint extract, Papyrus corrected. And, uh, he floundered around for a lie that was even remotely believable. Just in case I found myself in a situation which a kiss might seem eminent. It's prudent to be prepared for eventualities like that. That was a thing that could have been true, right? On the off chance someone wanted to kiss him and while he was out and about, and they had bad breath, he could offer them a peppermint first. The logic was sound. Sands clearly wasn't buying it. That's the biggest load of bullshit I've heard in a while, he said. Papyrus really didn't want to start fighting again. This was so tiring he couldn't bear it. Oh, all right, he said, shoulders slumping in defeat. I used that peppermint bomb on purpose. I confess. Why? Because, Papyrus said, because the truth is... He paused, caught up in a moral crossroads. He gathered himself and forged ahead. The truth is, I'm the one who tore up that hill. I've been practicing there because it's out of the way and I won't have to worry about breaking anything. Sans sat back in his chair, deflating a bit. Is that true? Papyrus nodded. It wasn't a lie, exactly. I wanted to keep it a secret. You know how those kids are. I'd have to find another spot if they found out I was there. So what you're telling me, Sans said, leaning his elbows on the table, is that when you say you're out on night patrol, you're actually wandering out in the woods to goof around with your magic? I'm not goofing around, Sans. Papyrus at least didn't have to fake offense. 
Sans' grin crept back into place. My brother is slacking off work. I'm doing no such thing. Pro, I've never been so proud of you, Sans said, wiping non-existent tears from his eye sockets. I want to shout it from the rooftops. You better not. And this is just the beginning, Sans winked. If you want, I can show you all the prime napping spots. You just say the word, he said, with a grand sweeping gesture. I can show you a whole new world of underachievement. Papyrus crossed his arms, doing his best to look cheesed off. Seeing Sans back to normal had evaporated any irritation he would normally be feeling at the implication that he was in any way being lazy. I don't have to sit here and listen to this slander. Seriously, Sans said, pushing away from the table. This might be the best day of my life, not even exaggerating. He gathered their abandoned sandwiches and dumped them in the trash. This was the first time Papyrus had seen him throw something away in over a week. He supposed he should be happy about it, along with the attempt at making food. Instead, Papyrus found himself trying to suss out why Sans was acting so unnaturally functional. Either he was still stinging from Papyrus's rant yesterday, which was bad, or Papyrus was showing enough strain that Sans felt moved to try to take care of him, which was equally dire. Hey, Sans said. Lesser dog is on duty tonight, right? He shuffled across the living room to rummage under the TV stand in what, for him, counted as a flurry of activity. Yes, I believe so. Well, if you don't have anything else going on, my contact at the dump came through with this, Sans said, coming up with a human car magazine. The cover was wavy from a long-dried spill. Car and driver, July 2009. Nice, huh? He tapped the cover with one finger. I'm really hoping this is just coffee or soda or something. Garbage juice was never quite that benign, but the faint of heart never scored neat stuff. Besides, there was one good reason why Papyrus left the actual reading part to Sands, aside from necessity. Only a few years old, Papyrus conceded. One of the better publications, too, in his opinion. Sands teased apart the stuck-together pages. I haven't had a chance to read it yet, so I don't know if it's any good, but we could go through it if you want. Come to think of it, they'd fallen out of their normal routine, hadn't they? Normally, it would be Papyrus pestering Sands about reading to him. He was fascinated by cars, but he couldn't really read about them by himself. Books he could mostly deal with, but text in magazines was so small, and usually faded and stained, too. And print wasn't like a computer screen, where he could resize the text and mess with the font and find something he could manage. After about ten minutes with one of the human magazines, all the words swimming around and letters switching places left him with a headache. Truth be told, Papyrus couldn't really dredge up much excitement about the only slightly obsolete automotive discourse. Technically, reading about cars had always been pointless. He'd never see one for real, much less get to drive one himself. Until recently, he'd gotten joy out of just learning about them. Daydreams were as important as oxygen to most monsters in the underground, but lately he'd lost access to his dreams. If there'd been anything close enough to lean on, Sands would have been leaning on it. The way he was peering over the top of the magazine, eyes glowing a little unevenly, betrayed exactly how nonchalant he actually was, which was not very. Okay, Papyrus said. What else could he say? Their couch was not comfortable. It was lumpy, and there was a broken spring that always wound up digging into Papyrus's pelvis no matter how he sat. If Sands was uncomfortable, he didn't show it. He tossed himself onto one end of the dreadful Davenport with the creak of springs. It took Papyrus a couple minutes to fidget around for a passable configuration. He settled for sort of sprawling across the remaining cushions. Maybe if he spread himself out enough, that spring wouldn't... Nope, there it was. He sighed, defeated. Without knowing when the next one turn up, they couldn't really be choosy about what they read and what they skipped over. They'd gotten into a habit of reading each magazine methodically, cover to cover. As Sands moved from the letter to the editor, to the reader letters and responses... To the first of the editorials, Papyrus started to relax. Normally, he would be engrossed in the articles, or wondering about what the humans who had written them were doing now, and what kind of people they were, and whether they were all nice. He still couldn't recapture that spark of interest, but right now it was just enough to bask in how ordinary it all felt. The light from the lamp, the lumpy but familiar couch, the sound of his brother's voice as he read about fuel injection systems or slightly disappointing sport coupes, it felt normal, and right, and safe. He realized, sleepily, that this was his new daydream. Just this. 
and he didn't really have this anymore, but it was nice right now to pretend. Papyrus didn't know when he dozed off, but when he woke up, the clock on the wall read two in the morning. Too early to get up. The magazine had slipped from Sans' hands onto the floor, and he snored softly, head resting on his collarbone. Papyrus grabbed the afghan from the back of the couch and draped it over him. He got up and turned the lights off, eyeing the stairs in the dim, colorful light from the fairy lights outside. A few steps were creaky, and he could never remember which ones. He didn't want to wake his brother. He also didn't really want to be alone, so he returned to the couch, curled up on the lumpy cushions, covered himself with a corner of the afghan, and went back to sleep. <laughs> 